Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about routing rules. So if you remember last time we talked about uh, record creation and update rules where you can actually go in and, you know, create new records based upon emails that come in or basically activities coming in and kind of automatically create those. The next thing that we want to talk a little bit about is kind of the, the companion feature to that, which is routing rules. Now, routing rules really are just workflows. I mean, in essence, they're built off of the workflow engine and they're doing a lot of the same things that you could do with a workflow. They're just doing it on a much more simplified basis. So what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and, and use these routing rules to route cases from one area or basically not even from an area, but to a specific queue based upon criteria. So let's just take a look at how this is configured. So I'm back in CRM and I'm going to go up into settings and service management. And so in here, I will see an area for my routing rule sets. And when I click on routing rule sets, the first thing that you'll notice is I can have multiple routing rule sets for an organization. However, only one of those routing rule sets can be active at any given time. And so this routing rule set is going to contain all of your rule items that are ultimately going to define how cases get routed throughout the application itself. And so if I want to create a new rule set, I'm going to come in here and go ahead and, and click on new and I'll just call this sample rule set. Then I'll go ahead and save it and this will allow me to add my rule items. And then when I click on my rule items, now it's it's really just kind of creating your conditions via kind of the advanced find editor and then applying the case or the item that you want to route it to. And so in here I will come in and I will define this maybe as bronze cases. I will then establish my conditions and you'll see that because of the way rule, routing rule sets are, they're all based off of the case entity. So this is assuming that you want to take a case and route it somewhere within the application and you'll see that there's toolbars that kind of initiate that. So you select your entity of case, select the field that you want to base off of, which maybe in this case I'll just use service level since that'll have some of my bronze items. I'll go ahead and select what service level I want and then click on OK. And now you'll notice here, what do I want to do? I want to route it. Where do I want to route it? I want to route it to a queue. What queue do I want to use? And I've had a queue here that I've created called bronze. And then I'll go ahead and save and close or save and new if I want to create additional ones. So it's a very straightforward process when you start looking at it from, from an application standpoint. You define a very simplistic condition or even maybe a more complex condition based upon pulling in from related entities. And then you specify the queue. You can't necessarily get into any other, you know, items from that standpoint. It's what are you looking for? Where do you want to route it? So we're going to go ahead here and we'll just finish creating the rest of my uh, routing rules of one for silver and one for moving to the gold queue. So now that I have all of my rule items set, again, you'll see here that I have the option to order them in the order that I want. And again, it's one of those scenarios where once it finds one that it applies to in this situation, it's not, it's going to stop and it's not going to process anymore. So make sure that you define the order that's going to give you the best possible scenario to be flexible based upon the different you know types of cases and queues and scenarios that you would work with. So you're going to be able to route everything correctly. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to activate the rule set. And again, once you activate the rule set, you're activating it at an organization level Level, and you can only have one active rule set per organization. So once this one is active, you won't be able to activate any other rule sets within the application. So now I can go ahead and kind of consume this. And so let's talk just a little bit about the consumption process of a rule of a routing rule. So the first thing is if you're using case creation rules, which is one of the reasons we talked a little bit about them in the last video, when a case is created automatically through a record creation rule or a record, up, uh, record creation or update rule, it will automatically have the rule, the active rule set for the organization applied. So it'll create the case and then it will route the case based upon the specific criteria that you've applied. If you manually create a case, the rule or the routing rule doesn't actually get applied. So that's one of the, the major differences that you'll see from an application perspective is if the case is auto created or using the, you know, using some type of automation scenario to create it, then the routing rule set will get applied and evaluated. If it's manually created, it doesn't do that because it doesn't necessarily assume 
that it needs to have a queue item created for that item or for that record when you're working through. So in this case, I'm just going to create a sample case. I'm going to associate it with a customer record. And then I'm going to save it. Now, once I save this case, the first thing that will happen is, like I said, it won't go anywhere. It won't do anything. Now, even if I were to come in here and change the service level to gold, if I were to go ahead and save this record here, and go to service, queues, all items, gold queue, nothing's in here. It doesn't show it, it doesn't display it. So in order for that to kind of happen, what I would have to do is I would manually have to apply the routing rule. And so the way that I apply that routing rule is by going in and opening up the item and I don't even have to open it I could just select the item and then apply the routing rule but we'll just show you from here go ahead and click on apply routing rule once I hit apply now it's going to go through look at the active rule set and apply that routing rule at that scenario now I could also come in here and I could select you know multiple cases I have a few of these cases that actually have the service level defined to silver, bronze, and gold. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this routing rule, and that'll go ahead and apply it for all the cases that I have selected. And now I can go ahead and go up to service and queues. And now I can see the gold queue actually has some items assigned to it. If I go to the bronze queue, it has an item assigned to it. And if I go to the silver queue, it has an item assigned to it. So it just gives you a very, very nice way that you can kind of transfer way, you know, transfer information across and very quickly get things routed to the appropriate area. So that's routing rules. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to them. They're, they're pretty straightforward. You know, if you need anything very complex within different situations, you, you may still want to look at using workflows and triggering workflow automation from that situation, but they at least give you a nice alternative that you can very simply configure within the editor. And like I said, with 2016 coming, they've been, are, I've heard that they're going to be making some enhancements to this feature as well, which would provide some additional flexibility as you're moving forward. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek, and I want to say thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a good one.